People don't need to be fixed. Tune in today to hear more. Welcome to the Fierce Authenticity Podcast, where we're illuminating and dismantling all of the ways supremacy culture has impacted our relationships with ourselves, with source, and with others. Not just the overt ways, like racism, sexism, ageism, alcoholism, and all the other isms, but also the sneaky, cunning ways you wouldn't have thought of, like perfectionism, imposter syndrome, judgment, burnout, the not enoughs, and the hustle to achieve. I'm your hostess, Sharani M. Batuk, and I'm a relationship therapist, leadership development consultant, and author of the book series, Fierce Authenticity. Whether you're a returning listener or you're new here, I want to extend a very warm welcome to you and invite you to connect with me through the Fierce Authenticity newsletter community. If you're ready to rise above an inherited systematic invasion rooted in fear and lack so that you can calm and refocus those energies towards reclaiming a fiercely authentic personal relationship grounded in an abundance and love that is so radiant all your other relationships are elevated with you, then this is the space for you. I invite you to visit www.fierceauthenticity.com slash connect to join me. I'm so excited that you're here. And now let's dive in. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so excited that you're here back with me for another episode of the Fierce Authenticity Podcast. You guys, today's topic, like the previous one, is a big one. We are going to talk today about how people don't need fixing. You don't need fixing your partner, your spouse, your lover, your child, your mother, your father. Nobody needs fixing. And today I will be sharing with you why that is. And the answer to why that is, is actually quite simple. People don't need fixing because people are not broken. You see, supremacy culture has created a system of standards and what things, quote unquote, should look like or shouldn't look like. And when we're operating under that system, of course, if we're not meeting the exact standard in the exact way it was set, we're going to feel that there's something deficient in us. That is built by design. Built by design. Because when you don't show up to the standards which supremacy culture has set based off oppressive, manipulative practices and tactics, you then have a tool to beat up on and oppress yourself. Because you think there is something deficient in you when you are not meeting the standards that were set by that system. As you're hearing me say that, my hope is that you're starting to become aware of the vicious cycle, this pattern that's been created, again, by design, very specifically, to keep you thinking that there is something wrong with you, to think that you're not enough, that if only you worked harder, if only you tried harder, if only you studied harder, if only you were a better mom, if only you were a better wife, if only I was a better employee, if only I could do what Bobby Joe over there could do, if only I could do more, then I could achieve whatever that standard is. And so you think that there is something wrong with you, that you then have to go out and 
fix. And this isn't just applicable to you. Of course, maybe you have a child and the child isn't getting all A's or A pluses. And you might think, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with my kid. They need all this tutoring. They need this, that, and the other. So you think that they need some sort of fixing in this area. Or let's say your husband isn't able to show up for you the way that you would like him to show up for you. And then you get into the pattern of thinking there's something wrong with him and he has to fix himself. He has to learn how to show up better for you. And so you think that he needs to be fixed. Or maybe you have a friend who has the same struggle over and over and over again, and she comes to you with the same sob story all the time. The characters in the story might be different, but the story is always the same. And you get hooked in thinking that there's something wrong and something in her that needs to be fixed. Well, guess what? There is nothing wrong with people. There is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with your child. Nothing wrong with your husband. Nothing wrong with your friend. Absolutely freaking nothing lutely long. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was a tongue twister. Absolutely nothing freaking wrong. Nothing. Because people are not broken and there is nothing to fix. Sure, can people be spinning around and around in similar cycles? Absolutely. It still doesn't mean that they're broken. It simply means that they have forgotten the truth of who they are. They have forgotten the truth that they are perfect, whole, and complete, that they are these absolute radiant beings, that they are expressions of divine love made manifest in human form. And if they were to understand that, then they wouldn't be in these same cycles and patterns. Just the same way, if you understood that you are a beautiful, brilliant, perfect, whole, and complete, radiant being that is also an expression of divine love, then you also would understand that there is nothing to be fixed about you because you are not broken. When we get into these patterns of believing that we're broken or that those that we love are broken or that something needs to get fixed, what we've done is we have forgotten that truth, that truth of who we are. And I spoke about this in my first book, Fierce Authenticity, Show Up, Be Seen, Get Love. I spoke about how really what we're doing when we do these practices, when we engage with this work, is we are unbecoming all of the stuff that we are not. We're clearing the dust we are moving through layers and layers and layers of gunk that has been put upon us by our families, by society, by our cultures, and ultimately by systems of supremacy. And it's in engaging with these practices and understanding that you are not broken, The people around you are not broken. You don't need to be fixed. The people around you don't need to be fixed. That your relationships will improve. And when your relationships improve, other people's relationships will improve. And their relationships will improve. And their relationships will improve. And it will continue to ripple out, ripple out, ripple out. And that is how we are going to undo or dismantle or 
rebuild. And really, we're not rebuilding because we're actually burning the whole thing down and starting over like a phoenix rising from the ashes. What we're doing when we do this is we're creating a system based on greater love, greater equity, greater belonging, and just, again, greater love. And when we're in that place of greater love, and when we can understand that we aren't broken and that the people that we love or the people in our lives aren't broken, then we can actually invite ourselves and them into remembering who they are, remembering who they are at their highest expression of themselves. And as each and every single one of us begins to do that little by little, we invite every single person we come across to rise with us. And then we're not being something we're not, or at least trying to be something we're not. And then we're not fixing anything because, again, we're not broken. We are simply inviting others to remember the truth of who they are perfect, whole, and complete sparks and expressions of divine love made manifest here in human form, here to experience the wonder, the awe, the beauty, the joy, the amazement that actually is this world. Because quite frankly, Underneath this veil that's clouding our vision, this veil of supremacy, there is wonder and joy and awe and amazement and beauty. It's just that our filters, our lenses have been covered by the fear of more than five millennia of supremacy culture and the ways that it has conditioned our brains, our bodies, our nervous systems, and thereby the way it has conditioned how we show up in the world and in our relationships. And before we leave today, I do want to make a side note that one of the reasons we do want to jump in and try to fix ourselves or fix someone else when we believe that there is a different way for them is not only because of our own internalized supremacy and thinking that we know what's best for others, but that it was also once a protective mechanism. Because if you didn't fall into line, if you didn't do things to the standards that were set by supremacy's oppressive system, it could have meant death. And death of you, and death of your loved one, and death of your neighbor or friend. And so when you view it from that perspective, this idea of fixing, jumping in and wanting to come in and abide by the standards set by supremacy, was highly adaptive at one time. Because it had the potential to keep people alive. And when we can understand that as each of us is engaging in our practices to unplug ourselves from supremacy culture's mainframe machine, then those standards set by supremacy are no longer ones that we need to strive for, adhere to, 
or be afraid of or live in fear of. Not necessary. Because as you wake up and disengage yourself from supremacy culture's way of being, you begin to remember who you are. And you in turn invite others to remember who they are. And together, as we all continue to do this, we all rise. And then supremacy culture can have absolutely no impact on us to oppress us. And it also no longer has any legs to stand on. Because quite frankly, the legs that supremacy culture stands on are us. And that's why supremacy culture always works to keep us under, to keep us oppressed, and to keep us in a continual state of striving and hustling so that it can continue to stand. So my invitation for you this week, heck, not even this week, my invitation for you today is to consider the fact that you are not broken, there is nothing to fix, that you are perfect, whole, and complete, that you are a divine spark, divine love made manifest. Consider that. Notice what happens to you, in you, around you as you begin to remember the truth of who you really are. And with that, take really good care until we meet again. I want to take a moment to honor and acknowledge the amazing support team that helps make this podcast possible for you. Starting with Diego Velazquez, our podcast editor and the talented artist who created our custom music. Ana Olvina, my wonderful assistant who creates all of our beautiful graphics and the transcript of every episode, which you can find over at www.fierceauthenticity.com. Biana Sandich, who writes our amazing show notes and does it so well that I bet you couldn't tell it wasn't me. The talented Jillian at Epoxy Studios, whose photography is our cover art and pretty much every other curated image that you see of me on social media. My husband, who puts up with me when it's 11.30 p.m. on a Sunday night, and I'm like, hey babe, I gotta record a podcast episode. Like, right now. Is that okay? My higher power, whose divine wisdom flows through me to bring these messages to you. And last but not least, I want to thank you my listener, so much for listening in. If you'd like to join the podcast support team, some ways you can do so are by rating and reviewing the podcast, sharing it with everyone you know, and if possible, making a financial contribution through the link in the show notes so that you too can be part of the team elevating this podcast and making it possible to bring to other listeners like you. I'm sending you so much love And we will be together again soon.